Breaking on 4 News now, demolishing the Moscow murder house, when it will be torn down, and why investigators wanted one more look inside. Our dry weather will eventually be coming to an end when we might see the return of rain or even snow in the first alert forecast. And three bodies found in northeast Spokane just days apart. We'll have the latest on the woman found dead in a field and hear from a family member of another victim on how they'll honor her memory. You're watching 4 News Now at 6. And we begin with that breaking news out of Moscow. December 28th, that's when the off-campus home where four University of Idaho students were murdered will be torn down. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Derek Dice. For more than a year, the house has served as a constant reminder of the tragic deaths of Madison Mogan, Zana Kernodal, Ethan Chapin, and Kaylee Gonzalez. Not only for their families, but for the entire Moscow family. Our Jordan Smith spoke with the university and has this story from Moscow. Well, this announcement comes almost 13 months to the day that those four students were found murdered in their off-campus home here on King Street. The University of Idaho tells me today that this is a major step forward in the healing process and moving forward. For more than a year, students have walked along King Street, glancing at the house that's now nationally recognized, the boarded up windows and crime tape, a daily reminder of the murders that changed this beloved town. That is a area that is dense with students, and uh, many of them walk past that house every day. They see it out their windows. But two weeks from now, another step forward in the healing process. We wanted to find a date to take the house down that had it would decrease further impact on our students. The university announcing today that while students are away on Christmas break, Germer Construction will begin tearing down the house at 1122 King Street. I think each uh, significant event that happens is one further step toward healing. It's a long road, not only uh, for the university and for our students, but most certainly for those families. President Scott Green saying this house is a grim reminder of the heinous acts that took place there. Later saying it is time for its removal and to allow the collective healing of our community to continue. <laughs> Ahead of that demolition, Brian Koberger's defense team arrived on King Street this afternoon getting access to the inside of the house. The defense gathering photos, measurements, and drone footage of the area in preparation of the trial in which Koberger faces the death penalty. There's still no date set for his trial. In Moscow, Jordan Smith, 4 News Now. Well, the man accused of killing a family of four in Kellogg will have his charges reduced thanks to a mediation agreement with the family of the victims. According to court documents, Major John Kaler agreed to plead guilty to four counts of second-degree murder instead of first-degree murder. The victim's family also agreed to drop the burglary charge against him. Kaler told police he snapped and killed them because his wife told him the 18-year-old neighbor exposed himself to Kaler's children. A hearing to change his plea is scheduled for Monday afternoon in the Shoshone County Courthouse. Three people found dead in Northeast Spokane in less than a week, just blocks apart. After tonight, police are still searching for the answers. They were all found in an area south of Minnehaha Park, with the latest being found last night near Buckeye in Havana. The bodies of 23-year-old Kiara Morgan Whelan and 37-year-old Colton Russell were found near Cleveland in Cuba last Friday. Today, 4 News Now's Allison Martinez spoke to Kiara's family, who's hoping for answers about what happened to their loved one. Allison. That's right. Kiara leaves behind her one-year-old son and a tight-knit family who are all devastated, including two cousins who I spoke to today. They describe her as not just their cousin, but a big sister. I, I miss her, and I would do anything to have her back. Sharing music, doing each other's makeup, and sleepovers are all core memories for Kiara's cousins. I refused to sleep in my own bed. I would always crawl into bed with her and we would like cuddle because um, I absolutely adored her. After tragedy, Mackenzie is holding those memories of Kiara or Kia extra close to her heart. Is the fact that her life was taken from her by another human being. Um, I thought that that was so cool. 
According to the Spokane Police Department, Friday night, officers received calls describing gunshots in the Minnehaha neighborhood. Officers say when they arrived, they found Colton in his car and Kiara in the street. It's like I remember like that being one of the first things I said to my mom was that's like there's no way that's not fair. Now Kiara's family is making sure she's remembered for the person she was and not her tragic fate. That's one of the things that um, sticks out to me the most about Kia is how just loving and caring and kind she was. Her little cousin Kenzie is even considering going to cosmetology school. A dream Kiara always had, but now won't be able to achieve. Well, but now I'm thinking of it more than ever so that like I could do that for her almost, you know. The Spokane Police Department is still looking for information on how Colton and Kiara died. Anyone with information is encouraged to call Crime Check at 509-456 2233. Reporting in studio, Allison Martinez, 4 News Now. Those families need some answers. We're learning more about another body found in that same area yesterday. Deputies believe the only noticeable injuries found on the dead woman were caused by a dog found at the scene. Marissa Rio spoke to people who live nearby about their concerns following these deaths. This is the area that that woman was found last night and not too far from here. There was another deadly shooting just last week. I heard from a few people who live in this area and they say they're both fearful and frustrated. A quiet road with a house surrounded by a white picket fence on the corner. But what you don't see here are the mysteries that this neighborhood holds. Incidents in our local neighborhood of uh, people being killed is very scary. The body of a woman was found in this lot near where Vales lives around 4 p.m. yesterday. The lot is near East Buckeye between North Havana Street and Custer. Other neighbors said they heard all of the commotion. Uh, we heard lots of sirens going off and on, um, traffic being rerouted through the different neighborhoods. The Spokane County Sheriff's Office says the only noticeable wounds found on the woman were to her upper body believed to be caused by the dog found at the scene. These incidents have left people in the neighborhood fearful. Well, I used to feel safe walking my dog in my local neighborhood, but now I don't feel safe. A few members in the community say they're frustrated with all the issues in their neighborhood. They want something to be done. For them to get arrested and for them to take their drug houses and go somewhere else because by the time we're done, they're gonna stop because I'm not stopping. Major crime detectives are still investigating this incident. The dog was taken by scraps last night and will remain impounded throughout the investigation. Reporting in Spokane Valley, Marissa Rio, 4 News Now. All right, the weather has been pretty calm these last few days, but that will eventually change. Let's send it over to Chris Crocker with your first alert forecast. We do have more very quiet weather in the forecast with hopefully a little more sunshine than what we saw today. I did see some hints of blue sky briefly, but we have had a fair amount of clouds moving through with a system that brought a little bit of light snow to the panhandle of Idaho and a few sprinkles on the Palouse, but we are clearing out, drying out uh, tonight with very dry weather in your forecast radar. Just a few clouds passing through. I don't think we're going to see much fog development tonight, but that may become more of an issue as we get into our weekend. Our temperatures right now are in the 30s. We did get up above freezing and above average today. It's 34 in Spokane, 35 in Coeur d'Alene, 37 in Spokane Valley presently. We're headed to overnight lows down in the 20s. Watch out for frosty spots on the roadways. If you see sparkly streets, uh, those are going to be slick, especially in the mornings. We see those are high temperatures tomorrow. It is going to be another day of above average temperatures. Our average high now is 34, 41 in Coeur d'Alene, Post Falls, Liberty Lake and Spokane Valley, 41 in Mead tomorrow, as well as Spangle, 38 officially at the airport in Spokane. Your planner for tomorrow, mostly to partly cloudy skies. I think we have a better chance to see a little bit of sunshine tomorrow. I will be back with your weekend forecast, plus tell you about that possibility of some rain or snow in the seven day forecast. Derek.
Well, Spokane's largest homeless shelter will remain open until the end of April. The City Council approved the extension of the Salvation Army's contract to run the Trent Resource Center, also known as TRAC. Some City Council members say the shelter isn't perfect, but it's important that it stays open. This is still complicated. It has not been solved. This is a band-aid until we get more data and how we move forward and how we fund it. But we do not want anyone on the streets. The new contract will cost the city $3.2 million. Washington Governor Jay Inslee announced his almost $71 billion supplemental budget. One of the highlights is an additional $64 million to combat the opioid epidemic. One pill can now take your life. The fentanyl is the nuclear weapon of drugs. And we've got to up our game against this scourge. Last year, 156 people died from an opioid overdose just in Spokane County. That number is up 24% from 2021. A part of the money would go to equipping first responders with Narcan, a drug meant to reverse the effects of an overdose. Inslee also wants to set up 20 smart machines filled with the drug in areas with high rates of opioid overdoses. The state legislature will vote on the governor's proposed plan when they return to Olympia next month. We now know every single team, the Washington State football team, will be playing next season. The games you won't want to miss coming up. I was definitely shocked and uh, my friends were definitely upset because we accepted her as just like one of us. Turns out a high school student in Massachusetts is actually in her 30s. How she allegedly managed to enroll in multiple high schools coming up on 4 News Now at 6. Download the KXLY Plus app on your connected TV. Saving you green. Arby's, two for seven bucks. Every day, the big beefy boy that started it all. Two of those things for just seven bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. My dry eyes made me a burning, stinging five times a day. Makeup smearing, drops user. I want another option. That's not another drop. Tirvaya, it's not another drop. It's the first and only nasal spray for dry eye. Tirvaya treats the signs and symptoms of dry eye disease fast by helping your body produce its own real tears. Common side effects include sneezing, cough, and throat and nose irritation. Relying only on drops? Not me. My own real tears are my relief. Ask your eye doctor about Tirvaya. You know, there's millions of people without the health insurance they need. I get it. You feel like it's too pricey, a headache to deal with, and not worth it. You deserve something better and better. We're on a mission to get everyone high-quality health insurance. We have plans with as low as $0 out-of-pocket premiums, a network of local doctors, and a rewards program for making healthy choices. Nice. That's why we're America's number one marketplace health insurance. So call us or go online now. And better health. On a mission for better. $3 pitcher night. A couple cocktails. An edible. And a nature documentary. What do all these people have in common? A friend like you, who offered a ride or made sure they got in a ride share or provided a couch to crash on. Thanks for keeping the roads a little safer tonight, Washington. Together, we get there. So you want somewhere to play? We got you. A nice, relaxing stay? We got you. Want to be entertained? We got you. Want to play golf all day? We got you. Some tasty food, we got you. Don't you want to do some shopping? We got you. The live music is always popping at the Corner Lake Casino. At the Corner Lake Casino. Corner Lake Casino. The winning is just the beginning. All these two for seven bucks. Every day, a classic, a favorite, an Arby's legend. Two of those things for just seven bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. Well, tomorrow, the Washington Supreme Court will decide whether or not to intervene in the case of who should control the future of the Pac-12 conference. Justices could determine whether or not a lower court properly ruled in this case, which essentially gave Washington State and Oregon State universities control of the Pac-12 board of directors. WSU and OSU are the only two schools who have not announced their intention to leave the conference next year. The 10 debarting schools argue the Whitman County judge ruled incorrectly here and have asked the state Supreme Court to intervene 
intervene. The court says a decision will likely be filed by the end of the day tomorrow. To learn more about each side's arguments, you can look for this story on KXLY.com. And Washington State announced its football schedule for next season. Finally, sports director <laughs> Julian Minnesota is here to show us what we can expect for the Cougs in 2024. Well, this time last month, we didn't think we'd ever get a schedule with all the uncertainty in the conference and all that fun stuff. But just having games to look forward to, that's a win for the Cougs. Here it is. The home games are in crimson. Road games are in gray. Washington State opens the season at home against Portland State on August 31st. That will be followed by a marquee key matchup against Texas Tech in Pullman just one week later. Dates have also been confirmed for the Apple Cup rivalry against Washington at Lumen Field in Seattle, a home game against San Jose State, and a road game against Oregon State. Opponents and locations for the remaining games are set, but dates for those games will be announced in the coming months. Now, in addition to the previously scheduled games against San Jose State and San Diego State there in the schedule, the Cougars will also play six games against the Mountain West opponents, three home and three away. This is part of the football scheduling agreement with that conference. It should also be of note that Washington State and Oregon State will not be able to compete for a Mountain West Conference championship. So they're competing as independent universities under the Pac-12 name and we'll dive deep into that and what it means for the landscape of college football and potentially their shot at a college football playoff later in sports. I think considering the circumstances, mm -hmm. they've done pretty well to piece this together. My only disappointment was that Hawaii is coming to Pullman and yeah. we don't get to go no to Hawaii to the for yeah. that one. All right, Julian, thank you. Four things to know about your weather. We have a very quiet weather pattern for the next few days with partly to mostly cloudy skies. It's going to be dry this weekend and the possibility of some rain next week. I'll be back with your seven day forecast. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Hospice of Spokane. Ironstone Furniture and Fire wants you to have all the comfort and total joy. Whether it's a cozy reason to hit snooze, eat dinner, or a spot to kick back. We have furniture that is good looking, well built, and comfortable. Just add your favorite people in stock now. Visit our showroom, Ironstone Furniture and Fire in Coeur d'Alene. 4 News Now and BECU are teaming up to welcome in some holiday fun and friendly holiday spirit. Send us a picture of your pet decked out for the holidays and you could win a $200 Amazon gift card courtesy of BECU. For details, go to kxly.com slash holiday pets. Andy's Heating, Cooling, Electrical. Guarantees to keep your home safe and warm. Your comfort is Andy's priority. Get ready for the cold with a high-efficiency furnace from Carrier and turn to the experts. Andy's offers a wide range of top-quality heating systems that are both reliable and environmentally friendly. Andy's team of experts are highly trained and experienced, so you can trust Andy's to diagnose and fix any issue efficiently. Andy's Heating, Cooling, Electrical. Your trusted Carrier experts since 1972. Do more to Whatever your plans are this season, do more in a new Chevy. Use your red tag bonus cash to get 8750 total cash allowance on this Silverado. See your hometown Chevy dealer today. Northwest Winterfest is back and going on now. It's the Northwest's largest illuminated holiday and cultural festival, now indoors and bigger and better than ever, with displays up to 130 feet long and 25 feet high, plus live performances, free interactive children's activities, and free admission for kids 10 and under. So come celebrate the magic. Your tickets are waiting at northwestwinterfest.com. All right, we're following some more breaking news. Within the last few minutes, we've learned there was a shooting at the Northtown Mall parking lot. According to Spokane Police, it appeared to involve a group of young men. They say they ran into the mall and left 20 minutes before police arrived. Police searched the mall, found it was safe, and gave the all clear. This is a developing story, and we will update you as we learn more.
Around the nation now, law enforcement desperately searching for a suspect or suspects following terrifying attempted kidnappings at the University of Arizona. Within the past week, at least three female college students reported being followed or groped, according to investigators. ABC's Jacqueline Lee has the story. The urgent search for a suspect or suspects after a string of attempted kidnappings at the University of Arizona has left the community on edge. The Tucson Police Department has dedicated patrol, investigative and forensic personnel who are working tirelessly to identify and arrest the suspect or suspects involved in these incidents. Within less than a week and within a mile of one another, Tucson police say there have been at least three attempted kidnappings of female students, each incident similar, with a man following the women in his car. 5'10 to 6 foot tall, medium to heavy set build with close buzz cut hair. Police say one victim was attacked from behind. Once she screamed, the suspect ran away. The next victim reported being followed by a car. The third victim says she was groped but able to escape. Now university students say they're taking precautions. I'm not with like at least two other people walking around at night. Like I won't be around by myself. The FBI, U.S. Marshal Service, and multiple local police departments are taking part in the investigation. Police are asking residents to share doorbell camera videos as well. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, take a look at this. This bull decided to go for a morning stroll on one of the busiest rail lines in all of New Jersey. As of now, no one knows how this bull got there, but it brought all of the trains in the area to a halt for almost an hour. Multiple agencies responded to the scene and contained the bull inside of a fence. Officials say he'll now go to an animal sanctuary where he won't have to deal with any grumpy <laughs> North Jersey commuters. <laughs> Our producer, Stephen, is from New Jersey, so he has first hand knowledge of those commuters okay. said even he even said you should see my sister when she's driving. I, he was explaining that he's from one town over yeah. where that uh, well I have a lot of questions is it a prank it would How be a wild sight to see right like yeah, it, yeah. Pretty crazy. Very crazy. Well, let's take a look at your forecast for tonight. Mostly cloudy skies, 27 degrees for an overnight low. We do not have any problems on our roads in terms of the weather, other than an occasional patchy area of frost. Partly cloudy skies tomorrow, high temperature of 38 degrees. Our forecast radar starting this evening. We've got some precipitation coming off the Pacific, but it's all heading well to the north as high pressure reasserts itself after a weak disturbance came through today. In fact, we may actually see some sunshine tomorrow in the afternoon. Looks like we'll avoid the uh, deep fog for tomorrow, but it'll be back for the weekend. Our chance of precipitation is back in the forecast for Monday. Zero for Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. A 30% chance on Monday. Looks like we could have a little bit of a rain-snow mix. Up to 60% on Tuesday, and that is actually Monday night and into very early Tuesday morning. I think most of the day on Tuesday will be dry, but it's going to be in the form of rain. Our temperatures, the trend here over the next seven days, this black line down here is our average high. It's at 34 today. It drops to 33 tomorrow and stays at 33 through the end of December. But we are going to be up close to 40 degrees by uh, the time we bring in our next round of wet weather Tuesday into Thursday. Now this is the long range forecast going out 8 to 14 days. This is December 22nd through December 28th. So that does include Christmas and we are in this darker orange color indicating a very strong signal of above average temperatures and not as clear on the precipitation and active southern branch of the jet stream, but we are just in this light, light uh, tan. So a trend toward below average precipitation, but that is less certain. Overnight lows tonight will be down in the 20s around most of the region. Couple spots in the 30s, including Wenatchee, Greg Cooley at 30, 33 in Lewiston. High temperatures tomorrow will be in the 30s and 40s, a lot of 40s for Moses Lake, Ritzville, Coeur d'Alene, Pullman, 47 in Lewiston, 44 in St. Mary's. Here's a look at your planning forecast. Dry through the weekend, then there's that 30% chance of a little rain snow mix, a little bit of light rain on Tuesday, and then we are dry. Winter officially starts on Thursday evening, a week from today, the winter solstice. 
no sign of real winter weather, but I'll keep looking, Derek. <laughs> okay. Chris, thank you. Still ahead, military service members are about to get the biggest pay bump in decades. The changes Congress had to make to the defense bill for it to pass coming up. And the Salvation Army in Coeur d'Alene is struggling to get donations. What programs could be cut if it doesn't reach its goal? Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. The all new Bet Ahead feature is now live at Caesar Sportsbook. Located inside Spokane Tribe Casino. Make your picks online from anywhere before you place your cash bets. Only at Spokane Tribe Casino. You just win here. Do you have property damage? Burke's Restoration provides full-service emergency response for residential and commercial disasters. Wind damage? Burke's can handle that. Is flooding your problem? Burke's Restoration knows just what to do. Fire or smoke damage? Call Burke's today. You didn't plan on a disaster, but you have a choice on who restores it. Choose the best. Burke's Restoration takes care of fire, smoke, wind, or water damage, and more. Tell your insurance company you choose Burke's Restoration. Call or click today. The holidays inspire us all to connect with family, with friends, no matter what the road throws at you. So find the connection you're looking for this winter in a new SUV with standard all-wheel drive during the Mazda Season of Inspiration sales event. Right now at Foothills Mazda, get 0% financing for five years and zero down payment with approved credit on the all-wheel drive Mazda CX-5. Shop now at SpokaneMazda.com. A brand new holiday musical with Elvis Presley, Johnny Cash, Carl Perkins, and Jerry Lee Lewis. Million Dollar Quartet Christmas the Musical. December 23rd at First Interstate Center for the Arts. BroadwaySpokane.com. Spokane and North Idaho's country leader. Drink a watermelon moonshine. Oh, Lord, when you ride the big 99.9 Coyote Country. 4 News Now and STCU are recognizing volunteers who make a difference in our community. Today, we honor Bob Walker. Bob helps take care of less fortunate families by assisting with gas and utility vouchers, bus passes, and by volunteering endless hours at the Caritas Food Bank. Bob's leadership and compassionate heart allows Caritas Food Bank to serve and support even more families in our community. It's like uh, nothing. This is what you're supposed to do. You do it, you just do it. Thanks to STCU for helping to make sure volunteers count. Spokane Tribe Casino brings you laughs and rock and roll like never before. Live on December 14th, this comedy sensation, Nikki Glaser. And don't miss the biggest acts of the 80s during the 80s rock invasion on December 16th. All at Spokane Live. Entertainment without limits. Spokane Wedding Expo is January 6th. For tickets, visit SpokaneWeddingExpo.com. Well, new at 6 o'clock, a 32-year-old woman is now facing charges for posing as a high school student. ABC's Trevor Alt has the bizarre story. This morning, the Massachusetts woman accused of posing as a Boston Public Schools high school student now facing multiple felony charges. Investigators say last year, 32-year-old Shelby Hewitt enrolled in three separate schools, presenting herself as a teenage foster child as young as 13, going by the names Daniela and Ellie. In reality, the defendant was a woman in her early 30s who had attended both college and graduate school and was employed as a social worker. Prosecutors allege while Hewitt was working as a social worker at the State Department of Children and Families, she created multiple names and dates of birth for herself and several fake social workers to spread a false narrative she was an extremely traumatized child with significant special educational needs. 16-year-old Janelle Lamont says she befriended Hewitt in school when the pair had three classes together. She says she suspected Hewitt had some mental health troubles because she'd have outbursts in class but never suspected she was a different age. I was definitely shocked and uh, my friends were definitely upset because we accepted her as just like one of us. Boston Public School officials alerted authorities this summer after administrators discovered a DCF form had been filled out incorrectly and the social worker listed on the form was not actually an employee there. Prosecutors say Hewitt didn't act alone. She had two purported foster parents, one of whom is another social worker. Hewitt pleaded not guilty this week to nine counts, including felony forgery, identity fraud, and larceny. Her attorney insists she was never a 
danger to anyone. She's a person who's had a lifelong history of mental health challenges. She's in treatment and she's working towards making herself a better person. Well, we have much more coming up tonight here at 6.30, including the insane price tag on the new postpartum depression pill. Plus, why the Salvation Army of Coeur d'Alene believes it's struggling to get donations this year after the break. Livestream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Wishing you a happy and joyful holiday season from BECU. Have you been looking for the perfect pre-owned vehicle and wondered, where have all the used cars gone? At Coeur d'Alene Honda, we have the best selection of pre-owned vehicles. Whether you're looking for a Toyota, Subaru, Ford, or maybe that perfect Honda. Every pre-owned vehicle is quality inspected and ready for you to take home today. We work with local lenders to get you the rate you deserve. Inventory changes daily, so come see us at Coeur d'Alene Honda or visit us on our website at cdahonda.com. Tony, your parents know you're over here again, right? Yep. Great. Tony lives next door. See, his parents decided to just use their phone for home internet. So when everyone is on, Tony's over here streaming. And drinking all my soda. My dog. Get internet on the Xfinity 10G network for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. We're going to bed, Tony. Good night. I'll lock up if I leave. Get real home internet on the next generation 10G network only from Xfinity. My name is Steven, and this is my Summit Cancer Center story. I had a large tumor in my left lung in November of 2018. We went through in 2020 doing a lot of end-of-life planning. Summit was very aggressive in my treatment of diagnosis. Since then, with my recovery, we're doing a lot of life events. I love the people there. I would recommend Summit Cancer Center. My wife calls it a miracle. Wishing you a happy and joyful holiday season from BECU. Next ET, we're with the Cloonies in New York City. Plus, Zachary Levi helps us celebrate a Hollywood legend. Welcome to Dick Van Dyke, 98 Years of Magic. Oh! Next ET. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Entertainment Tonight at 7.30. Right now, there's just so much happening in our world. So much at stake at the start of every morning. Making sense of it all? That's not always so easy. And that's where we come in. Good morning, America. We want you to know every morning. We're right here, and we got gotcha. you. Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now at 6.30. I don't know what the community would do without it. I really don't. That woman you just heard from is talking about the Salvation Army's Croc Center in Coeur d'Alene. Her son is disabled and uses it for physical therapy. The center is huge for the community, used by one in three people who live in Kootenai County, providing essential community services at a low cost. But this year, the Salvation Army in Coeur d'Alene says it's only raised about a third of its goal. And with only two weeks left to fundraise, it's urgently looking for more donations. Bronte Sarotsky shares why this might be happening. The Salvation Army here in Coeur d'Alene has services that are a staple for many families in this community. But this year's Red Kettle fundraiser hasn't been making as much as years past. Now they're making an urgent plea for the community to help. I have a son with disabilities and he accesses the center for physical therapy. For local parents like Roberta, this center has acted as a lifesaver. Because our community truly needs it. But this year, the Salvation Army says it's desperate for the community's help. We've only raised a third of our goal so far this year. This is the first time that Don Gilger says they've had trouble meeting their Red Kettle fundraising goal. The reason he thinks it's so bad this year? The economy. Inflation is very high. It's really hard on families. And that leads to what we see going on. When the need is greater and the economy is not as good, then the donations go down. Now the organization that helps the community says it needs the community's help. I really want to keep helping. When you help us, we can help others. So far, the Salvation Army has only raised 103,000 of its $245,000 goal. 
meaning services like providing clothes this winter and collecting food for local food banks could be at risk. Well, they're going to be, have to be reduced in some way. But they're confident their community will step in before that happens. Once they know the need is great, that they'll come forward and help. The deadline to meet that goal is less than two weeks away. In the meantime, Roberta says her son will be there ringing the bells, helping the organization that's given their family so much. And help the Red Kettle reach its goal. Reporting in Coeur d'Alene, Bronte Sorotsky, 4 News Now. All right, around the Northwest, take a look at this. Hundreds of people lined up and a few even decided to camp out to be one of the first people to try the first ever In-N-Out Burger in Idaho. If you'd like to try it for yourself, well, you can have a bit of a drive here. It's about six or seven hours away from Coeur d'Alene in the Boise suburb of Meridian. <laughs> now, I like a double-double just like anybody else, but I don't know if I'm driving that far to go get one. I feel like it would be a shorter trip to fly to, like, <laughs> Vegas and probably less expensive <laughs> yeah, with the gas. It There's might be. no easy way to get places in Idaho right. from one end to the other, uh, even if... It is for a double-double. Uh, let's take a look now. A live picture of, oh, well, we've got a little hitch in our giddy up there. There we go. Live picture of the Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena this evening. It is a quiet in downtown, and the clouds have been moving in for most of the day. Those clouds are going to be clearing a bit as we get into Friday. Here's Friday morning, 3, 4. No precipitation coming out of those clouds, and I think we may manage a little bit of sunshine tomorrow, which is hard to come by this time of year, especially with the sunset still in the three o'clock hour. If we do get a little bit of sun, it won't be around for long. Our temperatures right now are above freezing in most locations. We have dropped to 31 in Cheney, but it's 34 in Spokane, still 37 in downtown as well as in Spokane Valley. For our morning lows, we'll be down in the 20s. There's still some spots on the roads where the roads are wet those will be refreezing so watch for those sparkly streets if you're getting an early start tomorrow but it will not stay frozen for long we are heading up into the 40s in many locations right around the Spokane area including Coeur d'Alene and Spangle 40 in Deer Park and 41 in Mead here's a look at your day planner for tomorrow partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies high temperature of 38 34 is our average high after a morning low in the 20s I'll be back with your seven-day forecast, plus an update on El Nino. We've already seen that it is taking a toll on our winter-like weather. I'll let you know what the latest is in just a few minutes, Derek. All right, Chris, thank you. It is finals week at WSU and a lot of other schools. The end of the semester is a stressful time for college students. Psychologists say many parents underestimate how frequently their college-age kids express mental health concerns. A report by United Healthcare Insurance found college students are much more likely to report experiencing depression, eating disorders, and suicidal ideation compared with what parents report about their child. 41% of students reported experiencing depression, while only 22% of parents reported their child had depression. If you or a loved one is struggling with an urgent mental health crisis, call or text the crisis line at 988. Free help is available 24-7. The first pill to treat postpartum depression is now available in the U.S. Zorzuve was approved by the FDA in August. The drug makers say it's available at specialty pharmacies and can also be shipped directly to patients. But it comes with a hefty price tag, nearly $16,000 per course before insurance. Results from a late-stage study showed women who took the medication had significant improvement in symptoms within days compared to those who took a placebo. Military service members are getting a pay bump next year. It's a part of the National Defense Act that made it out of the House yesterday, but some key provisions were taken out. CNN's Laura Aguirre has more. House lawmakers approved the annual renewal of the National Defense Authorization Act. Already passed by the Senate, it has a price tag tipping just past $886 billion. There are men and women on the front lines across this nation and across the world. Uh, who are doing the work of this nation. The bill includes the military's biggest pay raise in more than 20 years, over 5%. It also gives many members additional pay allowances to help with off-base housing and meeting monthly expenses, a move that could boost lagging recruitment numbers. Of the five Defense Department service branches, only two 
The Marine Corps and Space Force met their active duty enlistment recruitment goals for the fiscal year 2023. In the midst of this recruiting crisis, it makes zero sense to artificially limit the reach of our military recruitment advertisements. Controversial provisions related to abortion services and transgender health care for service members were left out, despite being included in a House defense bill that passed this summer. The bill extends current aid for Ukraine through the end of 2026, but funding for a separate $105 billion national security package covering both Ukraine and Israel aid remains mired in bipartisan contention. I'm very disappointed that we are breaking for the holidays without additional Ukraine funding, without additional Israel funding, without additional humanitarian funding. The NDAA now goes to President Joe Biden's desk to be signed into law. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. 12 million pieces of mail are expected to be sent this holiday season. Coming up, we'll take a peek at how it all gets sorted here in Spokane after the break. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Join live for a festive month filled with big stars, musical performances, and our annual sweater party. Weekdays at 9 and 3 on KXLY ABC4. This may look like a holiday shopping showdown, but it's a Nissan sales event to add. Good thing my Rogue has intelligent all-wheel drive. So does my Altima. Now get 2.9% APR financing for 60 months or save up to $3,000 on the 2023 Nissan Rogue. Better hurry. These offers won't be back in stock. We love our house, but lately we've been feeling a little cramped. So we talked to ICCU about a new home loan. The process was super quick and we got a really great rate. We start house hunting tomorrow. Preferably something with a bigger garage. $3 pitcher night. A couple cocktails. An edible. And a nature documentary. What do all these people have in common? A friend like you who offered a ride or made sure they got in a ride share or provided a couch to crash on. Thanks for keeping the roads a little safer tonight, Washington. Together, we get there. Emma? My name's Emma, too. Are you? Yeah, you. In a few years. How? You went back to school. Finished your degree. Face your future with Whitworth University. in a new Chevy. Get 2.1% financing on all 2024 Blazer models or use your red tag bonus cash to get $1,500 total cash allowance. See your hometown Chevy dealer today. All right, welcome back. Tomorrow is the grand opening of Schweitzer's new Creekside Express chairlift and ski bridge. The new high-speed quad replaces the old chairlift for the resort's beginner slope. Musical chairs, for those of you familiar with Schweitzer. The resort says the lift will double the capacity and cut the ride time in half because, again, if you go to Schweitzer, you know, sometimes you get to the bottom of that run and it takes a long time right. in line to get back up. But that ski bridge is uh, going to be interesting as well. Just like it, it looks strange, doesn't it? But oh, that's it'll filter fun. everybody down to the bottom of that chair. Well, and you, you need to take that chair when you park down below. Yeah. So a lot of folks on that chair. Oh my gosh, I've got goosebumps. Literally <laughs> she, she have really goosebumps. <laughs> <laughs> That's Just exciting. Just ready to ski. I am I so excited. I really wish that I had known that story was coming up before what I am covering in tonight's <laughs> forecast El focus. Nino. Yes. Oh my goodness. New information from NOAA released today that we have a chance that this El Nino, 80% chance that it is going to be strong this winter. So it is a beefy El Nino, but there's a 57% chance that it is going to be historically strong in the top five 
strongest El Ninos since they've been keeping track. Uh, so we've got quite a situation in the equatorial Pacific. Of course, the El, Ni El Nino is the warming of the sea surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific that disrupts weather patterns globally. Uh, in the inland northwest, that translates into typically warmer and oftentimes wetter weather. Now, warmer is almost always the case. Wetter varies a little bit. Uh, coming up in the next week, it is going to be very wet weather through the southern states where we are going to have more of a ridge of high pressure. So we'll be keeping an eye on El Nino and our fingers crossed. Now we have had fantastic El Nino ski seasons, but El Nino almost always results in pretty tame winters down in the valleys. Uh, so if you have a snowblower or on your Santa list, it may not get a whole lot of use this winter. Here's a look at the outlook just heading out into Christmas, December 22nd through the 28th. And we are in this warmer than average red orange color, fairly deep onto the key here all the way through that time period and our temperatures are going to be above average through the seven day forecast. Precipitation wise, again, we're going to have a very active southern branch of the jet stream bringing in lots of wet weather into California, Nevada, Utah, but we are in this little sliver of yellow indicating that we are going to be seeing more below average precipitation. Now the bad combination is to be in this dark green, in terms of skiing, in this dark green along with the above average temperatures, we get those Pineapple Express or atmospheric rivers. That's what really is a setback to our ski areas. So we've got some snow, they're making snow. We can hold on to our snow with this type of weather pattern because it's cold enough in the mountains to make snow and to keep the snow that we do have. The groomers are out moving that snow around and getting it right where it needs to be. And we do have a chance of some wet weather Monday and Tuesday. It's not a great chance, but it's coming up from the south and definitely favors the mountains for what will be in the valleys, a rain snow mix or just rain, but hopefully we'll be able to get some more snow going in the mountains. Winter officially starts a week from today. In fact, almost exactly a week from today. It's in the seven o'clock hour, the winter solstice, Derek. Okay, Chris, thank you so much. Well, more than 12 billion pieces of mail and packages are expected to be delivered nationwide this holiday season. Spokane's Postal Service is asking you to be patient and send your Christmas presents extra early. Peter Choi takes us behind the scenes of a mail facility tonight. The plant manager said more than 220 thousand mails are coming every day and a plant manager says if you want to send your present this Christmas, do it as early as possible. So we're hitting our peak numbers right as you're here. Thousands of packages are being sorted out on conveyor belts. Staff at the Postal Service are busy gearing up for the holiday season. We did about 50 million between Thanksgiving, or not, not just packages, but letters and packages between Thanksgiving and Christmas. I expect to do about 64 million mail pieces this year. The plant manager says the facility had dealt with mail delays and staff shortage last year. And he says this year's operation has been much smoother. We've got sophisticated forecasting methods on what our customers are doing. We know what our peak, time, peak days are. Scanning is at an all-time high. However, delays could still happen, so mail your presents now. First class and ground advantage mails are due this Saturday. This is what we do. This is the season that postal employees rise up to, and we look forward to getting your packages and your letters home in time for Christmas. In Spokane, Peter Choi, Fortune News. I just can't imagine like the pace of working in there at this time of year. All right, here at 4 News Now, we want to settle a debate once and for all. What's the greatest holiday movie of all time? We created our festive film face-off. It's a March Madness style bracket with 32 of the most popular films going head to head. One of the most controversial matchups is White Christmas versus Die Hard. And before you start yelling that Die Hard isn't a Christmas movie, our producer wants to remind you that the entire plot of the movie is centered around a holiday party. 
to cast your vote. I think most dudes put Die Hard in the Christmas <laughs> movie category. To cast your vote, you can head to kxy.com slash holiday movies. All right, what's up there for you? Elf. Yeah. Buddy the Elf, what's your favorite color? It, it's, it's definitely uh, in my top three. In fact, my uh, teenage son just got a, hey, buddy, hope you find your dad <laughs> sweatshirt of the Norwal. So pretty sweet. Yeah. All right, coming yeah. up in sports. Yeah, WSU fans got a Christmas gift as well. We take a deep dive into that football schedule, the games you'll want to circle on your calendar and what it means for their college football playoff hopes next in sports. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. The Spokaneites of Spokane are nestling into holiday glee. With gifts on their minds, what Santa might bring me. What can I get grandma that isn't ugly dishes? For my uncle, a Traeger, he loves to smoke fishes. My kids now have it all. I just don't understand. Good thing the general store is a toy wonderland. A gift for everyone in one stop, I swear. Carhartt jackets, Yeti coolers, even thermal underwear. No matter the person, how big or how small, there's a gift here for everyone, so come one and come all. My darling granddaughter, this camera was given to me when I was your age. May it capture your big, beautiful life the way it did mine. It's so surprising what the little things can do. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everybody... Oh, Merry Christmas, Grandma. This is important information from AARP and BECU. Caring for a parent, spouse, or loved one comes with a lot of responsibility, including financially. Research shows the family caregivers spend an average of 7,200 of their own money every year. There's often a struggle for caregivers to take care of their own financial needs as well as the needs of their loved ones. AARP and BECU are here to help by offering advice, tips, and tools with a video podcast series, Caring for Caregivers. For more information, visit this website. Adventure awaits at Silver Mountain Resort this winter. Enjoy some of the best terrain in the region, only 30 minutes east of Coeur d'Alene, right off I-90. Family, friends, and smiles as big as the wide open vistas. Relax in a beautiful condo just to stroll away from dining, water slides, indoor surfing, and 84 degrees. And a gondola ride away from our new covered carpet lift, tubing, and acres of snow rider heaven. Your winter adventure awaits at Silver Mountain. Book today at silvermt.com. Spokane Exercise Equipment is the Inland Northwest premier provider of top-of-the-line exercise and rehabilitation equipment. Once the Spokane Exercise Equipment technicians have finished setting up your new home gym, that's when the workout competition begins. Spokane Exercise Equipment has all you need to achieve your fitness goals. They offer delivery, installation, service, and maintenance for all residential and commercial customers. Visit them in downtown Spokane or go online to see their full line of products. 4 News Now is brought to you by Foothills Mazda. All right, welcome back. WCU's 2024 football schedule is set. There is no shortage of marquee matchups. Our sports team, Julian Minnesota and Alex Crescenti, join us now in studio to break it down. And guys, what are your big takeaways from the schedule? Well, when you think about where this program is at right now, with all the uncertainty in the Pac-12 on the outside looking in, to have games on the schedule, Alex, right. some against power conference opponents, that's a total win. Yeah, Washington State has made it known that they want to continue to play at the highest levels of college football and compete for a spot in that expanded playoff next year. I certainly think this accomplishes that. Yeah, the home games right here are in crimson. Road games are in gray. Washington State opens the season at home against Portland State on August 31st, and then it's followed by a marquee matchup against Texas Tech in Pullman just one week later. Dates have also been confirmed, of course, for the Apple Cup rivalry game against Washington at Lumen Field in Seattle, a home game against San Jose State, which was previously on the schedule, and a road game against Oregon State. Now, opponents and locations for the remaining games are set, but the dates for those games will be announced in the coming months. Now, in addition to those previously scheduled games against San Jose State and San Diego State, the Cougars will also play six games against Six more Mountain West opponents, three home and three away as part of the football scheduling agreement with the conference. So, Alex, we have the schedule. Yep. What catches your eye when you take a look at it? Yeah, of course, we know the big marquee games, Texas Tech, Washington and Oregon State there. But it's the Mountain West slate that's very interesting there because you've got San Jose State, Utah State, Wyoming and Hawaii, all very winnable from what we know about the teams right now. But 
The away schedule, that's tough. At San Diego State, at Boise State on the blue turf, at New Mexico, and then at Fresno State. That's a tough slate. It'll depend on, you know, where the time of uh, year that these games fall. And also, there's a lot between now and the start of the season in terms of rosters. We're just guessing based off of, you know, what we know from the previous few weeks and this season. But a lot will be uh, determined, and we'll get maybe a better idea at the conclusion of spring ball. Should be of note, WCU and OSU will not be eligible for Mountain West Championships. They're competing as independent schools so that means if they want to get to a college football playoff they have to get one of those at large spots but with conferences shifting you never know how it's going to shape out with the CFP spots and how much they're allocated for those at large bids so if you go 11 and 1 it's a pretty good schedule to get you in the conversation. Right, least. yeah. How about that, getting them on the national stage like that? That'd be awesome. But it's not just about football either. According to college basketball insider John Rothstein, Washington State and Oregon State are in talks with the Mountain West to join the league for the 2024-25 season. Now, there is no timetable on an announcement. This is the last season for WSU and OSU before the Pac-12 disbands as of now. There are five Mountain West teams in the top 50 of the net rankings. Pretty good. And we have a pretty big basketball game on Friday as well. Gonzaga will take on defending champion UConn in Seattle. A rematch of last season's Elite Eight. We'll have live coverage from Seattle before and after the game right here on 4 News Now. That'll do it for sports. All right, guys, thank you so much. Here's a look at ABC's primetime lineup as we head into a break. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Hobbies, two for seven bucks every day. The big beefy boy that started it all. Two of those things for just seven bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. It's the only time of year the reindeer fly. You can't see them on their sleigh ride across the sky. around or go out and paint the town it's the only time of year the whole wide world turns upside down tony your parents know you're over here again right yep <laughs> great tony lives next door see his parents decided to just use their phone for home internet so when everyone is on tony's over here streaming and drinking on my soda my dog Get internet on the Xfinity 10G network for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. We're going to bed, Tony. Good night. I'll lock up if I leave. Get real home internet on the next generation 10G network only from Xfinity. Tonight, celebrate 100 years of... When I think of Disney, one word that comes to mind... Whoa. Amazing. Dreams. Oh, wow. Super kind of Forever magical. Disney 100, a century of dreams. Tonight on ABC. This Christmas, treat yourself or a loved one to a new vehicle from Finley. With delayed payments for up to 90 days and bigger than normal trade-in values for your old ride. Giving you plenty of reasons to upgrade to a new RAV4, Tacoma, or Tundra truck. And if you're looking for a certified pre-owned vehicle, we've got lots of great choices for everyone. I'm looking for something sporty and fast. Don't you have somewhere to be? Oh, ho, ho. Two for seven bucks every day. A classic, a favorite, an Arby's legend. Two of those things for just seven bucks. Arby's, we have the meat. Christmas party food safety. Next Inside Edition. How to make sure the food you're serving your guests is safe to eat. This is an amazing hack. I did not know that. How long can you really leave it out before it goes bad? Then, behind the scenes with the Queen of Christmas, singing her holiday classic. Baby, please come home. Watch the next Inside Edition. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Inside Edition at 7. All right, welcome back. More breaking news tonight. Here is a live look of heavy police activity near Cleveland and Myrtle in northeast Spokane near Upriver Dam. Law enforcement tells us they are searching a home in that area right now. We don't know what they are searching for, but we have a crew on the scene and we'll update you as we learn more. Now, of course, this is the same neighborhood where two people were found dead after reported shooting last Friday and another woman was found dead in an empty lot last night. Again, we will continue to keep you updated on this on KXY.com and on Nightside at 11 o'clock. We'll see you later tonight.